Hi, I'm Stan. Welcome to my sausage making workshop or house or whatever you want to call it. Come on in. Main thing here is the counter, the grinder, the stopper, and a place to cut meat. I've been making deer sausage with my parents or uncle or friends for, oh, 50, 60, 70 years, I don't know exactly, but uh, we've been making mainly deer sausage the last few years, and no more just pork and beef. And the important part of that is the first thing you do. When you shoot that deer, you have to gut it, clean it, wash it if you can, and then get it to your a cool place as quickly as possible and skin it. I have a place here that I can draw it up. I can skin it right here. I have an air conditioner. I have a refrigerator. And so I want to try to get that meat cool as quickly as possible. I want it to set the hair washed off of it. I want to take care of that meat in a, in a very positive way. I also want to end up slicing it up, cutting it up as soon as I can and then either make the sausage right away or put it in the freezer once. I don't like to thaw stuff and then freeze it and thaw it because you lose a lot of the moisture. So you don't want to do that. But after you've got your deer ready, you cut it up into pieces, you take the back strap and things like that that you want to make jerky out of or put into the freezer to, to uh, make a roast or something. Uh, you take that out and then you weigh it and you get the same amount of pork or I like pork and beef in sort of equal amounts. Pork helps it hold together better. Uh, beef is I think a little more lean and, and uh, I, just, I just like the combination. So we try to get an equal amount. My recipe for seasoning is for 40 pounds. So we try to get around 20 pounds of deer meat and we try to get 20, 21, 22 pounds of pork and beef. Cut it into chunks and then we're ready to go to the seasoning and then the grinding. And we'll, go, we'll show you how we do that uh, in a minute. This is the way it looks after the spice has been mixed, which I did ahead of time because it takes a few minutes. But the spices that we use are, first off, there's always going to have to be some salt. And we've cut that back through the years from two cups of salt for 40 pounds to a cup and a quarter. This salt happens to be a curing salt, which is going to have some kind of a either saltpeter or some kind of nitrate in it. This is just regular old kosher salt, and that is uh, always good to use. It keeps the thing uh, fresh and, and so forth. I do put mustard seed in to keep the, uh, the, the stuff from getting too hard. Uh, saltpeter, I happen to in this batch I'm using some nitrate I got from my butcher downtown in Fredericksburg, Texas. And I use, usually try to use ground black coarse pepper. But I ran out, so I had to add a, a half a teaspoon of, of ground black pepper. And then what I've been doing the last few years that has really been helpful is uh, I've been drying and, gar and, and, and uh, well, taking it out of the garden, drying it, Anaheim peppers. They're big long red things. They're not as hot as cayenne or some of those, but they help give you more flavor. So I've been using that. And then finally, I have it in the fridge. I've got some dry garlic and I use two and a half tablespoons of dry garlic and throw garlic in. So it's basically pepper, garlic, a second kind of pepper, salt, and uh, things that have to do with curing. That's it. This is a common grinder, happened to buy it from Cabela's. 22 is, is, is just a size of some kind that's been used for 80 or 100 years. Yeah, this is, happens to be electric, which is what you want. But in the grinder, uh, we put, first we put chunks of meat, and we try to put them in, you know, and you'll see this, we'll show it to you a little bit. We'll, we'll try to put in different, uh, a fair uh, balance of deer meat and, and uh, other meat. 
And then the first time we grind it, we have holes. I don't know what those are exactly. Maybe a quarter of an inch? What do you think, Pete? And we, we grind it through. Then when we finish that, we take this off and we put on what we call a hamburger grind. Now some people like it even a little smaller than that, but I think that's just good enough. But we put that on and then what we do is we grind a couple of handfuls of the mixed meat with seasoning and we stop and we take it in the house and we put it on the stove and we fry some of it and we taste it to see if it's too salty or if it's not salty enough. Usually salt or pepper are the two things that are going to be out of balance. We taste it. If it's fine, which we always hope it is, great. If not, then we've got to either add more meat or we've got to add more seasoning. And adding more meat is a problem because it's hard to distribute meat that you go buy at the last minute and grind it to distribute it evenly and get it seasoned properly. So we really try to get it right. Okay? This is an old time sausage stuffer. Uh, it's probably 1920s, 1930s. It's uh, kind of difficult to use. You have meat, you put meat, uh, probably two, almost two gallons of meat, mixed meat, ready, to, ready for sausage, or that's already ready sausage. And you put it in there, and then you swing over, tie that baby down, and then you start turning. And this, this thing here, this wheel looking thing, goes down and starts pressing the uh, meat through this tube here on the front. And on that tube, by that time, you'll have this, this is really an intestine from beef. I like beef because you can peel it in sausage later on. Pork is a lot thinner, although it works fine too. But you find an end and the opening and you just put it on there and then you strip it on, you put it on there like that and then you hold here and we'll show you when we're actually doing it a little later how important it is to hold it exactly the right way to get the sausage stuffed properly. But we'll do that a little later, okay? Hi, Tony. Thanks for coming to help. No problem. That's some pork. I've got... Uh, here is... Uh, here are three, two bags of of deer meat. If you don't mind, just dump them on there and spread them around a little bit. And uh, mix them up as best you can. And then... Uh, ah! I'm getting too old to carry all this heavy darn stuff around. Ah! May not be the last sausage making though, right? Okay. This meat, this meat's still a little bit cold because it's better to have it too cold and suffer with your fingers than it is to have it all the blood running everywhere, which it's going to do anyhow. This, it's kind of nasty, really, if you if you're real squeamish about blood. Uh, are you real squeamish about blood, Tony? No. I'm glad. Never. <laughs> I'd hate for you to fall out while we're doing this. Anyway, excuse me. I got to drop this in the wastebasket. And then, really importante, to try to get this stuff spread around a little bit extra so that it, uh, so that it mixes up good. Yeah, right, we put them over in the trash. Sorry to walk in and out of the camera, but that's just the way it is sometime. And there we are. Now, before you do any more of that, let's put a little... Ah, I gotta wash my... It's important to have hot water, uh, if you can. And uh, so, if we're gonna mix the meat, we might as well start pouring some seasoning over it. And not the whole mess, just about a third of it or a little more. And then we just start throwing it around and that'll help get the deer meat and the, uh, well, there's some pork and there's some beef both in here. 
but it helps get that mixed up too so that when we start grinding here let me we got going over there am I getting some over here usually by the time you do mix it like this and then you grind it twice you you get a good mix very seldom does one sausage taste real peppery or real salty it really tastes it's it's all going to be good or bad right you don't right. think all good <laughs> i'm more optimistic than you yeah well that's okay <laughs> no let's pour the rest of it on and rinse it put it down some more well mixed you, you can just tell by the, that, the pepper and stuff Here, why don't we take some of this meat, let's just take some of this meat and throw it in here so we can uh, take it over and start grinding, if you don't mind. Okay, okay, thanks. We are going to start grinding and Tony's going to turn it on and then he's going to stand and trade, trying to alternate to make sure we get a good mixture of meat. We're not going to show you all of this because the grinding will take at least 30, 45 minutes. So we're just going to show you how it works out. And you can see that they used to call that chili grind, but I don't know what it is. I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it tastes very good as chili, uh, that grind. So anyway, I'm going to load him up some more so that since I got the boy here to work, or not to work, or whatever he's going to do, I want him to be. Sh I want to be sure that he doesn't stand by idly. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> yeah, I, I do the talking and the idling, and, and there's beer in the refrigerator too. Anyway, you might want to just cut it now because it's going to be the same thing for a good while. We are going to. We've already changed out to the smaller uh, deal. A grinding thing and then uh, it doesn't go through quite as easily or as well as the big stuff so it's going to take quite a lot longer and we're going to try to just have enough to put into the house uh, and uh, and cook it and you try to get a little of this and a little of that so it's it's uh, it's a good good cross section of of what you're doing Now we're ready for the second grind, but before we commence, we're going to take this and we're going to make us some meat patties, and we're going to go in the house, and we're going to put it on the stove, and we're going to cook it. And then we'll see you a little later. I usually make small patties so that we can test this out, and depending on how many people are here helping and so forth. Uh, you know, we make five patties or two patties or three patties and then we cook it and we taste it and that is that, okay? You got it? Okay. I've got another one warming up in here. I've got two extras. All right, what's the verdict, guys? Good? Yeah, fine. Peppery, what do you think, Stan? Okay. Then, then we're ready for the next phase. All right. All right. Tony is putting the uh, hard ground or the rough grind in. It's remixing it. This is going to go directly into the stopper. We're going to need to uh, stay on top of it to keep the meat from getting everywhere. But uh, this will go in the stopper and then we're going to actually be making the sausage. Okay, I'm uh, putting the stuff that's ready to stuff for sausage in this stuffer and uh, we try to fill it good and full every time because it takes a long time to, to turn it to get it back up and get it back down here to make it a little easier to turn but it's still pretty hard and you just put her on, do this and then start turning to get it to, and you can feel the pressure when you get it down there. It's kind of rickety. 
This is a casing, as I mentioned earlier. These are beef because they can be peeled. They're a little thicker. And uh, you take them, it takes, uh, it costs about 15 or 16 bucks for a, a set, as they call it, of casings at the grocery store at the meat market. They're about 15, 16, 17 bucks. So they're kind of expensive. And you just strip these casings on here. Now these casings that I'm stripping on, they come clean and washed and so forth, but I always run warm water through them again, one more time. You take the your thumb and you get bite down tight on it, and then Tony's gonna sc screw it so that the uh, sausage starts coming. And you hold it tight enough with your right hand, but you don't want to hold it so tight that it's going to break. You can go ahead faster, it'd be fine. And uh, so you want to try to keep the air bubbles out of there as much as possible because it, it stuffs better, dries better, cooks better if you don't have so much air in there. But at the same time, you don't want to constantly keep having it so tight that, the, that, that it breaks. Okay, you can go backwards. It needs to go backward a couple of times with these old things just to, to uh, stop. Since this was the first one, you see there's air holes here which, which, which we don't really want. But since it's the first one, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Let's go ahead and make another one that probably is going to be better. By the way. Okay. That's good. Okay. Another one? Okay. It's okay. These kind of sausage stoppers are very old fashioned. You can go to a food supply place and you can get one that's stainless steel. Sometimes they even have a foot pedal operator. They sometimes are electric. You know what I'm saying? They, the, uh, this, is, this is the genuine article. <laughs> Old school. Old school. Well, you couldn't be making sausage at a, whoa, that's good, at a professional meat market if you were, if it was taking you this long. It would just cost to to be cost a little bit prohibitive. Other way, yeah. That's good. Now we gotta we gotta stop. Move the sausages over. Put on some more intestines. Okay. There you go. Ready. Okay. Just squeeze with your right hand onto that tube and try to, you, you, follow, you turn so that you're following the curvature of the intestines. You don't want it to break. That's good. That's about enough for a, a nice ring of sausage. Uh, that's all. You can make them as big or little as you want. Of course, it gets wet here, so we'll have to... Uh, That's good. Okay. It's not going to make a very big one, but it make enough to... That's good. Okay, that's 10. Let's move over and see, see about tying them. Oh, uh, gotta move that, don't we? He used to take these sausages and twist them like that, and then somebody would stand there and tie them. It was, you got blisters on your fingers. It was hard to do. So what we're doing now, I, figured, I got this from an old cowboy in Lano, who said, nah, you don't need to do that. So all we do is do, a, I guess it's called a half hitch. Tony, what's it called? Half hitch. Is that what it is? Uh, you take a half hitch and you uh, tie the ends off. And then, of course, as you tie the next one off, it pulls it tighter again. I don't know if I can do this fast enough, but uh, the other thing is that it's nice to tie them along the way because 
you've got these extra sausage pieces that are going to come out the ends and then you can take them and you can put them into the uh, uh, back into the stuffer so you don't have so much uh, meat left over at the end but we also after we finish this process we're going to turn out we're going to cut these and then we're going to uh, have a, a we're going to get a deal to hang them on and then I actually have a smokehouse and we'll light a fire here pretty quick to begin the smoking process. Some years ago, before I built that little smokehouse, I uh, didn't know what to do one year. I was making sausage. So I went to Sears and I uh, got a refrigerator or a freezer box. And I set her down and then I cut uh, an opening so you can walk in. I cut two holes on the sides. I put dowel rods through the holes. When you cut them, you want to be sure you don't cut that one. <laughs> then you'd be wasting your whole effort. And then uh, this goes back into the stuff pot. Some years ago I built this little smokehouse because uh, I needed a place for tools in the summer and for smoking for one or two days a year in the winter. Uh, it's uh, kind of got a lot of draft, but that's so the smoke pours out. We'll show you that later. I have little different places here to hang sausage on, on sticks, but I also have hooks. I can hang about 45 or 50 sausages at one time. I usually smoke the sausage that I'm going to take down tomorrow and freezer wrap it or use it fresh. I usually smoke it once or twice. But then I also will use half the sausage and I'll show you how to hang it. We hang it in the, uh, in the butcher house and make sure that it's cool enough and that there's breeze going through and we'll leave it hang as much as two weeks to make dry sausage. And the dry sausage is never cooked. I'm using uh, oak or mesquite bark mainly. I suppose this is oak, right? Looks like oak. Mesquite is nice, but it's harder to get. And I just used some regular old barbecuing charcoal lighter. And the other thing you have to have is you have to have uh, something in order to handle it. So I want to set it down on the ground so, that, so it'll burn there. So I gotta have some way to, ah! and I'm also gonna have to have some way to put it in there on the ground. So it's a good idea because, you know, not everybody in the whole world is, uses the same language. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy Dean and his little buddy. But you use the language you use. Well, that's <laughs> perfect. The fresh language. Well, but see, to me, there's, there's fresh and dry. Yeah. And fresh means uncooked. But the dried is also uncooked. <laughs> okay. Whoa, now we got some smoke. Ah, you can see the smoke. You can see the sausage hanging. Uh, it's, it's a good hard smoke. And we'll let it smoke for at least uh, as long as it'll go today. And then we'll, uh, we'll put it on again tomorrow. And then uh, after that, we take these in, after the smoking is over, take these in and, and half of them, we'll wrap them right away for cooked sausage or fresh sausage or whatever you want to call it. And then the other half, we'll hang them and I'll show you how we'll do. Tomorrow afternoon, I'll take at least half the sausages from the smoking or the smokehouse and I'll put them up on these nails here and uh, they will hang there. I have about 40 or 50 nails here, but I'm not going to do that many. But they'll hang there at least probably about two weeks. And if it gets real warm or it gets real rainy, then I have an air conditioner over there to put on and I have a fan. So we don't cook them. We just let them dry until they're hard. 
And then usually the way I test it is, I cut one here in this main part and just look at it and see how tacky it is or see how dry it is. We've never had any trouble with that before. Um, we don't usually do wild pork and we don't usually dry that. But we will dry pork and beef that comes from the store along with deer meat. And then after a couple of weeks, we put the dry sausage into the freezer to keep it from getting too dry. Or we give it away or we eat it. <laughs> but that's all there's to it. This is a dried sausage. And I was vacuum packed, although it doesn't look like it's packed anymore. But uh, I put them in the freezer to keep them from drying much more. Uh, this is uh, patty sausage. You know, at the end of every uh, time we make sausage, there's going to be some leftovers and some ends and some stuff. So we just make patties out of them like you would uh, to, to, to fry uh, on Sunday morning. And then the other thing we have in here, other than uh, the uh, fresh sausage or the uh, for, uh, you know, the sausage here. And we even go so far as to just tell people that if you'll thaw it, cook it in boiling water for 12 minutes, take it out, it's ready to eat. But some people cook it too long or, of course you can fry it and you can do other things with it. But this is what it looks like. Uh, I mean, it's just, just frozen. And we just throw it in. And this is jerky that came from the back strap of the deer and it was dried a month ago so so you know uh, we've got it in there too but that's all is to it and you enjoy